I mean, that game, that was an exciting game. We've, we've seen some stomps. We've seen some surprising games. But this was a game that kept us on the edge of our seats for the entirety of it. I do love the fight that Fnatic put up. I love their aggression. These guys did not want to go down. I think that Fnatic exactly got what they wanted in this game. They got ahead in kills. Stebeck, sadly, again, behind in the CS. I think he has a average CS differential by minus 25 CS by 20 minutes and that's actually huge over all the games that he has played. Coming back though, Huni really huge for the team, coming to the mid lane, getting the first blood on Faker, roaming twice before Marin. I think Huni was the reason they came out ahead really in the early game. My favorite part about the game was the compositions that, that these teams were running. The first one on Fnatic side is a heavy AoE run at you with Sivir, you got the Cassiopeia ulti for even more lockdown, Nara Sejuani, clump them together, pile them onto your team. Lots of damage, and they play to that strength. On the other side, SKT's comp is more of a protect the Lucian composition with Rumble kind of ulting the back line. You saw everybody pile driving the Lucian and trying to make sure that he stays dead because Lulu isn't necessarily a carry, more of a supportive AP, and Rumble without the Zhonyas is very easy to blow up. And in the team fights, we see how the ones that Fnatic wins are the ones that they manage to get all their damage onto Bang. The ones that they lose, well, he barely escapes, but is a little bit of a misplay. Yeah, and the composition that uh, SKT was running is actually a really, really amazing composition in my opinion because Rumble's going to provide a ton of magic damage, cover that option, Lulu as well. But then Help Picks actually interacts with Light Slinger, procking the Help Picks twice. And what it does is it's 15% of your AP if all of them hit, so off of that that's 30% of his AP, when plus 100 base damage per shot. So Lucian's doing 320 extra magic damage every time he gets a Light Slinger passive off. And that's why he's running through the team and he gets a Blade of the Ruined King eventually to deal with the tanks because he's not a tank shredder naturally. Right on top of that, you have the Alice Star button people the away from him. You have Nunu, you have Lulu to uh, uh, give him the ultimate, speed him up, shield him. I mean, it is almost impossible to get to bang in this composition. Yeah, I feel like we saw pretty much defend the Lucian against go on the Lucian as hard as you can. And that is a style that Fnatic is really used to play and what we saw them going actually into the LCS split really heavily with Renga Lissandra. Lock down the carries and instantly kill them. And I feel this is really a comfortable champion pool that they went for this game and executed it perfectly. I think Yellowstar, as I think Monty also said, really on point with the lockdown. I think Fnatic played most of the fights very well, but I do think that Bengi was lackluster in understanding his role within that composition. We saw him try to be a front line and kind of distract Saver on the side. When she was very tanky, you know, he's going for a bit of a magic resist build. You can't stand in the front line versus a composition that has so much damage from Fnatic, you need to be really far back with the Lucian and use your snowball on the NAR. The NAR auto attacks hurt a lot. Use it on the Sejuani. Don't stand and try to zone the Sivir. That's why Sivir is not a hyper carry because she's a short range mage uh, AD. You don't need to zone her. She practically zones herself. I want to jump into our replay mm. to continue talking about the interaction yeah. between these two teams. So we're going to pull that up. And Zyrene, you can I, continue. I feel along. like this is how he should play the Nunu is just zone everybody away and kind of create two different fights. You're going to see Bengi here use the ultimate, keep Feather than out. He actually misses his ultimate there. And then Bang survives. Faker comes around the side, pours everything onto Bang, and now Bang gets to output so much damage into this fight right afterwards. And I think that Bengi, although he gets extremely low from it, I think that's the proper way to play the Nunu here. I think it's important to note though, for this team fight, they try, they pile drive the CC on the Lucian and the Vivian walks up just out of range mm -hmm. to hit the Cassiopeia ulti. That would have won them, that would have won them the fight, but he missed the ultimate on Bang and then they just get cleaned up. Yeah. After scared it. of the Nunu. And if he had walked exactly. into the zone, he may have been a little too slow to actually cover that distance to get in range. Of and the not only that, I, I think on top of that, what we can see is three flashes up for Fnatic after this fight, especially on Cassiopeia, who could have easily go on Bang and instantly kill him there. And I think the team fight would have been absolutely different because Fnatic was so far ahead at this point. I think they could have just snowballed from there. What it was, that was the story of the entire game, was team fight after team fight. Fnatic taking a lot of them through that mid game in their favor. I do also want to look at, though, the way that the gold was even through the earlier stages of the game. However, it wasn't, uh, even in turrets, 
However, Fnatic up in kills, down in CS, and, and you already mentioned Steelback, but that I feel could be the downfall of them in this tournament if they can't shore up those weaknesses. I, I think SKD, SKT did a really good job of playing to their strengths and playing to the weaknesses of Fnatic. They exploited Steelback. As soon as Steelback was down in CS and they bullied that lane, well, you would see Marin, he'd die in the lane, he'd be like, okay, TP to a minion to just stop him from farming again. And then his, uh, Steelback would go up to the jungle, Nunu would walk in and steal the wolves that he was trying to do. They're just trying to starve him out and make sure he didn't get anything and get into the game at all. All right, well, that being said, SKT leading up to this had averaged about a 1.2K gold lead at 10 minutes. Marin had the highest average gold lead for uh, in at MSI of anyone with 750. Uh, didn't happen here, though. Yeah. And I think that is something that I want to look at in terms of what can teams learn from what Fnatic did to give themselves a better shot earlier on against SKT. Well, even against the Turkish team, SKT has been notorious for giving quite a few early kills. And uh, Fnatic took advantage of that greatly. Good roams by them and really sticking to the game plan, knowing where the weaknesses of SKT lie. And, you know, eventually you take so many team fights and you're bound to lose a couple in such team fighting decided games it's only one that needs to happen for you to win i really see that whenever skt is going into mid game or early game control style they have this point from where they everything is controlled and they know how the lanes are and usually how the games are happening is somebody is like getting pushed in and they ex they do something they don't expect i didn't see any kind of top lane roam like this before in the tournament they were really not expecting it yeah. and hit them hard. That's really big. I feel like the thing to take away from this game is top lane influence, even without a TP. Because this is something that SK Telecom used to do with impact in the top lane season three, before TP was a big thing. He would roam down to mid and gank for Faker randomly, and you're like, whoa, 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 why is the top laner and the support here? And they would snowball that lane really hard. So I think that people should take away from this that a top laners need to be aggressive sometimes and actually influence other lanes and almost be like a second jungler sometimes after you shove the wave. The next thing I want to bring up here is the pick ban phase against SKT. Again, we've talked about the threats on their team. Faker, you always have to ban the LeBlanc. The Lulu, though, that comes out and how this is kind of the crux of this team composition here. You remove the Lulu, all of a sudden Lucian's DPS drops through the floor yeah. and his safety does as well. I'm going to have to disagree with that one because they banned the LeBlanc, the Callista, and the Rexa. So three other key champions that have been undefeated for quite some time. And you're just going to have to take a hit. When these teams are so good, you're going to have to let one of the power picks slide through. And you put the Lulu on Faker. Now he's not a carry threat. He has to get really in the late game for him to do enough damage to one-shot somebody out of nowhere. He's more of a supportive player for Bang. So I liked what they did with the pick and the man. It was the execution that could have been refined and they would have had to win. I like that we also had to see another element of Bengi here, see him on the Nunu, because he kept getting that Rek'Sai and it's like, this guy is so good on his early games. I like the Rek'Sai well, more than the Nunu. You know, talk yeah, about Rek'Sai though, let's just talk about Rek'Sai in general in this tournament has been phenomenal. Uh, it wasn't really performing so well post Cinder Hulk, uh, you know, 37% win percentage across the regions, but in this tournament just uh, a high priority and I think a, a portion of that has to be due to uh, the speed of these games. These games are ending a lot quicker. I think it has to do with the adaptation that before, with the introduction of Cinderhulk, a lot of people refused to switch over from Warrior Enchantment Rek'Sai to Cinderhulk and be more of a frontline CC bot. People still want to be, oh, I want to be a carry, you know, build a Hydra and my Warrior's Enchantment. Now they're just, okay, we'll build full tank, go with the Cinderhulk, use a ground passive and just become a threat of knockup every time. And once that change has been made, Rek'Sai's win rate, I think, has been soaring ever since. Yeah, I think Rek'Sai is really strong right now, especially on live, too, with Black Cleaver. Like, if you want to build that, oh, yeah. I think it's really potent. Well, yeah, I can't wait to see that item appear <laughs> in competitive play. Sheepy to you, Fnatic here. That's, that's a long game. So physically exhausting. It's a game that you were ahead in, that you looked like you were going to win. You didn't. How does Fnatic, and I'm asking you this as a coach, how do you as a team get yourselves prepared for the next match that you have with your spot in the playoffs on the line? I feel Fnatic should feel comfortable really here. What they did was a really great showing against supposedly the strongest team in this uh, entire tournament. And I think that they held their own. They did really well, maybe talk a little bit and tweak a little bit Steelback's performance in this game. A lot of misspell sheets, and I think you should just calm down, 
talk with the rest of the team and especially how Huni is performing in this tournament is just sensational for me. And this is how I like my Huni. <laughs> like he does really, really well and the TPA gangs were on point, I think. If they play the game like this, they shouldn't have a problem in the upcoming matches. You know, I have a feeling uh, Spawn would like to be on the desk for this one because we talk about EDG, or he talks about EDG being a better version of Fnatic. We now see what Fnatic playing, you know, at the top of their game can do against SKT. If EDG is that level of execution that you're talking about, Crumbs, we could be in for a pretty sweet game between those two teams when they meet up again. Yeah, especially looking at the weaknesses of SKT right now clearly weaker without the Rek'Sai, and I thought Marin, uh, Marin was a little bit unflexible in willing to change his item build. Still going with the early death cap, you gotta recognize you need to be a bigger frontline threat with the hourglass early. He didn't have it until like the last team fight in that game. You need to be able to re recognize that you have to adapt your build on the fly, and every Rumble game we've seen, he goes for the death cap. And I'm a little worried for Bengi if he's not getting the Rek'Sai, and I think this ban from Fnatic really opened up the entire of the teams that will play SKT to just permaban it. Yeah, and I'm really happy actually to see SKT struggle because they seem so unbeatable. And this mm. time they were like actually down in CS, down, uh, down in kills, and were really on the back. And I think that Fnatic could have actually won this game if they didn't get caught out at yeah. some points. And yeah, they, did, they definitely had a good chance to win this game, especially with what they had drafted and the way they played the early game. You touched on Marin. Marin, that was his worst early game that we've seen this entire tournament. He, this is the first time we've seen him actually have pressure on him because Huni was affecting other lanes. Huni TP'd like a good two seconds before he did, which is not what you see from Marin all the time. Marin's usually the one with the pressure who's like, I'm going to force your TP first to answer me. But Huni was actually playing that game first, and that's really good to see because this tournament, we talked a lot about top laners. Or top, we talked a lot about mid laners. Top laners, I think, are actually one of the bigger things because the skill disparity between mid lane is not becoming something where you're like, oh, that guy got solo killed in lane. Top laners are having a little bit more solo kills. Top laners are having more influence on the map when TP's up or down or it's been pressured out. So I think top lane and the style that we're seeing from these top laners is something that we really had to focus on moving forward in this tournament. Well, so then in regards to top laners across the entire tournament, let's take a moment to dissect them individually, right? So we're looking at we're looking at Marin, we're looking at Koro, we're looking at Huni. Where do you guys see these matching up? If you had to make a pick, who are you throwing your money on? Okay. As a representative from Spawn, they, he would probably say Core is the best top lane. <laughs> but I actually, he's not on the desk. He's not on the desk, but I, you know, I have to speak for him. Um, I feel like Huni is actually doing fantastic in this entire tournament. Every, every play that Fnatic sets up is actually Huni TPing behind, putting some kind of pressure, ganking mid lane. This guy is all over the map, putting pressure everywhere. It's just incredible to see how well he performs. So is that a Koro or a Huni? <laughs> that is a definite... You can't do both. Just <laughs> Spawn said Koro. Yes, Spawn said Koro. And she be saying I'm Huni. Definitely Huni. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to go with Koro just because I think that we have yet to see him really be exploited. And, I mean, with the exception of the game that they had against SKT, where I think that the entirety of the team just was dismantled. I think that was literally just Def picking Tristana, in my opinion. Well, I think eventually they all collapsed. But I think that Koro has less, um, less visible weaknesses. Like, it happens in the LCK a lot. Marin gets put Marin behind early. Like, he does die a lot. And he seems to be reckless in terms of his positioning during the laning phase. If he gets going, yeah, he's fine to carry. But if you put pressure on him at the right times, he does tend to uh, give quite a bit of gold. So that's Zyre, Huni. That, is that's that a, another Huni? Oh, <laughs> Zyre, Zyre, thoughts on Marin specifically, because that rumble that he keeps getting is really scary. I think his rumble is extremely potent, and it plays into the team fight style, and then they're just like, all right, we're just going to brawl you, we're going to uh, play around mid-game power spikes, which I think is a big strength of SKT, is when you get cheap power spikes, they push them to get an even larger advantage, and then they snowball from there. But if I had to pick a top laner, it's Koro. All right, well, we've just spoken over a lot, but in regards to Rainover's attempted Sejuani Q over a wall in that match, Fnatic would have needed to pause the game and ask referees to confirm the bug in order to get a remake. Since they did not, the result stands. Referees are still investigating the issue. All teams are aware of the remake policy and how to respond in the case of a potential bug. Now, with four games on the books, let's take a look back at some of today's action so far. After EDG got the better of a few trades in Game 1 versus Fnatic, there was absolutely no stopping them. This was that clash of the same play style that we talked about at the beginning of the day. 
I think that EDG actually played this really, really convincing. Baiting out Fnatic and always coming back oh. at this point. And this is every time how we see Fnatic lose when they get this airtime. Don't really know if they should engage or not, and then they just get slapped around and beaten. Th this is the heartbreaking play, too, where they don't go after Koro. He goes in the bush. Where'd he go? Oh, yeah. now let's go after Pawn, who only has one spell rotation really left in his pool. Yeah. And then, ugh. This was one of those um, um, Rek'Sai warrior games where yeah. he attempted <laughs> to make the carry with it, wasn't Cinder able Hulk, to Rek'Sai do so. Maybe Brady he would have burned Scott. him to death. Don't need to see him to burn him to death, right? Zero percent win rate with Warrior. Exactly. Our next one, AHQ, displayed their dominance earlier today, locking in their spot in tomorrow's semifinals against TSM. I like right here how Bjergsen waits for the fish to actually jump him up, because if he took the lantern first, he would have clumped up his entire Would have been even worse, yeah. but it still didn't end well. But look at how far away Dyrus has to TP into this fight, just off on the right side. And he's like, where's the rest of my team? <laughs> he's oh. just going for a, like a more a There's stroll. There's a fight somewhere. He's a horse. He needs to run. But they were legs. already pretty far behind at this point. I and think. they follow Lust Boy into the dragon pit. They pick up the dragon on the back end of that. And of course, in game three, EDG also locked in their spot in tomorrow's playoffs. Looking on top of their game, finally. Yeah, I think that the only big mistake they did in this game was the overchase in double doge with four versus one. That's always and a mistake. Yeah, this is always oh. a mistake. That's that it's combination good. at the bottom <laughs> yeah, lane just, right there. Just don't do that. But overall, they just played it really, really confident, and uh, I think nobody's surprised that they came out ahead. That this you know. fight is really. He almost gets it. Almost. Oh. How strong the with a blue card right here just barely makes it. Tribute to Red Tide over there. <laughs> oh, shots fired. Who knows? Hey, you don't know, man. Maybe we'll see Reginald in the final game of the day. Oh, Something they, could happen. They have him as a sub. He is the sub. I'm you never out for know. That. All right. Well, with only three games left in the group stage and one playoff spot still on the line, let's take a look at the standings. Fnatic can still lock in that last playoff spot with a win later today versus Besiktas Esports. Otherwise, we could be looking at a three way tie between Fnatic, TSM, and Besiktas if EDG beats TSM in today's next match. That means we would have to have two additional matches at the end of the day. Coming up in just a few minutes is that big test for the hometown favorites as Bjergsen and Team Solo Mid take on Pawn and Edward Gaming. Stay with us. Just focus on communicate, it will be fine. Just playing, playing something like Scream, actually, you know? He's proving absolute zero goes off. Yellow Star gets the kill anyway. Wolf in a little bit of trouble. But here comes Faker. Here comes Mara. Rain over coming in. Rumble, 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 Rumble,